Christian Fellowship family and everybody else that has joined us. We want to welcome you to the broadcast of the Christian Fellowship Church of God. And Jesus is a new life maker. And if you put your trust in him, he will give you a new life. Even in the middle of a pandemic situation, God is still restoring. He's still healing. He's still delivering and he's still setting people free. Amen. Can anybody say amen on this stage? Amen. Amen. We came to have church, and that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, we just want to go over the announcements, get all of that. I used to hear the old timers say, get them out of the way. We don't want to get them out of the way. We just, we just want to inform you what's going on. Every Monday through Friday, every week of Monday through Friday, Pastor Al and Pastor Jane want to invite you to join them at 1 o'clock for a time of fellowship in the Word, and, 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 and they do a lot of things on that day, a ministry, prayer, join them. Also, on Monday night is ministry night. It's all on Facebook, right here on the Facebook page, Christian Fellowship Church. And Monday night is uh, we focus on the ministry of the church at 7 p.m. Join us then. And then on Tuesday morning, it's virtual 10 o'clock perk. Get your coffee, your breakfast, come around and join us at 10. Who knows, we might even bring you on to share with us during that time. And so that's coffee perk. And then I can't see that. So some old person can't see it. And then on Wednesday night, we have Bible study at 7 p.m. And we have a, we've been having a special guest. Sister Jerry was with us last week. And I'm working on a very special guest. I'm not going to tell you who it is today because they're still letting me know. But you'll want to join us every week. It's great. And then Thursday night with Pastor uh, Stephanie and Pastor uh, Scott. Great Scott. I forgot your name, Pastor. <laughs> We want to uh, invite you to come on Thursday night right here at 7 o'clock on the Facebook for family devotion. And they bring their family together. It is a wonderful time in the Lord. And then on Saturday, we have um, Friday night, rather, we have youth at 7 p.m. And Mary, you want to just give us a little rundown on that real quick? Yeah, we do youth uh, on Instagram live and you can go back and check it. It's on the Instagram CFC Revived. Um, and we do youth from 7 to 7.30ish, and then we hop on Zoom, and we usually just hang out, play a game. Amen. I know y'all have a good time. Good, good to get all the young people together, even if it is on cyber. We're staying connected with your young people, so get your kids around that. And then on Saturday, prayer and praise. It was used to be prayer. And then the pastor said, well, we should be praising the Lord for what we've been praying about because God is doing things. Amen. So we want you to join us. That's just a, a cyber. It's a web. Uh, it's a Facebook page, prayer and praise. Go on there. You can, matter of fact, you can do it all week if you want to. But we highlight it on Saturday at uh, all day long, just right there. And then on Sunday morning, you don't want to miss Pastor Scott and Stephanie at 9.30 a.m. And then Pastor Al will be preaching at 11 a.m. right here on Facebook. I say it every week. Thank God for Facebook. During this time, he's bringing us together. And then at 1 o'clock, right after today, this service, we want you to join Danielle right over there. You got something special going on this week? Yeah. Zach? Zach? Wave a stick over there, brother Zach. He is our special guest. So you guys are going to want to join in on that because Zach is a man of few words, but the words that he says are great. So you're going to want to join in that at 1 o'clock today. I think I've covered it all. Amen. Oh, can't leave out the give. If I, I'm not really not together today. So y'all pray for me uh, next Saturday. <laughs> uh, we want to encourage you to continue to give. You guys have been showing up and, and you have been so faithful in your giving. We really don't need to just keep telling you because you already know you love the Lord. But we will just want to remind those that maybe are just joining us that uh, you can give on Giveify right here on the internet. G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com or you can download the app and you can go into the Christian Fellowship Church of God. Tap, give, and you're done. 
And it shows the ministries if you want to give to a specific ministry. Sister Diane. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just come to praise you today, Lord God. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We offer you praise and thanksgiving for all things that you have done, Lord. And we ask you to touch each and every person that's watching this. Touch the singers, Lord Jesus, and have them lead us to worship, Lord. For you are the one true God that we love and adore, and we worship you today. We give you all the praise and glory for what you're doing through this telecast, Lord Jesus. Just have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's worship the Lord. No identity crisis in Jesus. We know we're his. Hey, I know who I am. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am yours. I am yours. I I was running and you found me. I was blinded and you gave me sight. You put a song of praise in me. I was broken and you healed me. I was dying and you gave me life. Lord, you are my identity. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing. Come on, let's continue to worship the Lord. If you're home and you're sitting, you might want to stand. I know I found to worship a little better when I'm standing because I get a little active. And I sing better when I worship the Lord when I'm standing. It's okay if you want to sit. King of glory. Hallelujah. Yes, the world will bow down. We'll bow down and say you are king. So all that's all right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. Just Just wanna 
Just lift your hands. The Lord is there in your home. He's here in this place. The King of glory, through worship, we have invited you, Lord, into this place. God, visit us, Lord, in all of our situations, in all of our conditions, God. 
do a visitation amongst your people, God. We may not be in a building, but we are in the spirit, the one true spirit of God. You have drawn us together for this morning to lift up praise, to lift up honor, to glorify you, and even dance in your presence. Oh, what a mighty God you are. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands. Oh, sing it, Mary. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sing. King of the Lord.
freedom is never free. The price has to be paid for freedom. The price has to be paid to maintain freedom. We are so thankful for the soldiers, the men and women, the sailors, who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be free. Again, freedom is never free. Someone said, our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier and sailor who died protecting it. Let us never, ever forget that. I really believe that the Lord wants to use this time to where we cannot be as business as usual. I believe the Lord did not want us in four walls while uh, Easter week took place. To where we wear our best suits and, and best dresses and honey strikes. I, I believe that the Lord wants us to ponder and to think about things that are so important in our lives. So Monday, when we can't go out shopping the way we want to, when we can't go to the beaches and we can't have the big picnics, maybe, just maybe, we can contemplate the men and the women who gave it all for us. You see, all gave some. But some gave all. And I think about the one who paid the price for our sins. The one who paid the price for our spiritual freedom. To where we can live for eternity with him. You see, it cost the greatest price that there ever was, wasn't it? So what are we, we doing with that? I, in, the, in, our, in our basement, I have a picture of the old Memorial Stadium. And in it, and it says... As a memorial to all who valiantly fought and served in the World War with eternal gratitude to those who made the supreme sacrifice to preserve equality and freedom throughout the world. And at the very bottom it says, time will not dim the glory of their deed. And it will not. Now that stadium to which this was built... 35 years later, was torn down to build a parking lot. But that does not diminish the sacrifice that the women and the men of our country have made and have been making ever since. And we praise God for them. I want to talk for a, just a few minutes this morning about remembrance. What do we remember? What do we remember? You see, remember, memories are very, very important. If we have no memory... We are adrift because memories anchor us. I love that song. I was kind of hoping we would sing it this morning, but I think we sang it last week or the week before. But it says, I look back and I see that you are faithful. So you see, we can look back. I remember, Lord, when you were faithful. Therefore, I look ahead and I know that you are able. Memories are powerful things. Jane came out the other day, and she was wearing a perfume she hasn't worn in a long time. And, and man, it brought back memories because this was the same perfume that she wore 41 years ago when we were dating. And it, br it just brought back such wonderful memories. And, uh, and now that I'm old, I'm <laughs> getting older all the time, um, I really, really believe more and more in the hereafter. Because I walk into another room, and I say, what am I hereafter? <laughs> because memories... <laughs> My, you know, sometimes I forget things, and I think we all do that from time to time, and I, I, I see that more and more and more. But the main thing is, do, never, do not ever, ever forget the main thing, and his name is Jesus. And he paid the ultimate price for us, the ultimate sacrifice, and he did it for everybody. And if we receive him as our Lord and Savior and say, come into my life, I receive what you did for me at Calvary. Oh, what a precious Precious memory that is. So you see, we can look back, and I, and I know I do a lot of remembering, and sometimes from the pulpit I'll say, you know, it was 20 years ago, back in you know, 1999, when Jeff on January 16th, you know, he was in an automobile accident. And you say, why would you want to remember that? Because I remember what God did there in that time. And then I can remember, oh, back in 1979, and in January 19th, I remember going out with Jane. Actually, I got that backwards. Anyway, going out with Jane on our very first date. And you say, well, how can you remember that? Because it was very important to me. 
41 years later, if I didn't have the first date, <laughs> we wouldn't be married now. But memories. And I look back now at things at the hardest times in our life. And, and I can say, and they're monuments. And I say, Lord, I remember when I was going through the hardest time of my life. And you were there. And you moved mightily. And you did the impossible. And I praise God for that. And it's a memory. It's a memorial. And then there are other times. And I say, Lord, I was going through another, the hardest time of my life. And I prayed. And I worshiped you. And I believed and you didn't move the way I wanted you to. But you did what you felt best and thought best. And I am better because of it. And Lord, even though the outcome wasn't the way I wanted it to be, it gave you glory and I'm stronger because of it. What memorials do we have in our life to where we can look back? Do you remember when you, we were, you knelt at an altar of repentance? Praise God. Praise God. I think of the prodigal son in, 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 in the Gospel of John. And this guy, this kid, had the, had the world by the tail. But he was so sick of just being around the father's house all the time. He wanted excitement and he wanted to live a little bit. And he wanted to see a few things. He, he wanted to see some more girls. Maybe there wasn't any where he lived. I don't know. But I know he went and he's told his daddy. He goes, I want my inheritance now. And it broke his daddy's heart. And his dad gave it to him and went off. He went off, and he blew it all. And then a hard time came. You see, hard times come, don't they? And he blew all of his money. And when the money was gone, so were his friends. And he didn't know what to do. And now he's, he can't even eat, and he's starving to death. And he has no money. And then one day, you know, he's, and he, he finally got a job feeding swine. And for a good Jewish young man, that was not the job to have because it was an abomination to their culture. But he had to do it. So what did he do? One day, it says, when he had his head in the trough, <laughs> he came to himself. And you said, you know what? My daddy is rich. My daddy owns it all. The servants of my daddy's house are well fed. My servants in my daddy's house aren't begging bread, and they don't have their head in the trough. I think I'll go home to my daddy. You see, for that young man, that trough was his memorial. And, and then on the way home, he's rehearsing what he's going to say. Dad, I don't deserve what you have for me. Dad, I don't deserve any of this. I just want to be one of your servants. And the Word of God says that the father never stopped looking for his son. And he's on the porch every day looking, looking, maybe today, maybe the, today will be the day. And then when he saw his son afar off and he knew who he was, he jumped off the porch. And back at that time, the patriarch of a family, and he was probably very, very well known in the community, he wouldn't run for anything. If the house was on fire, he would walk. But no, 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 he saw his son and his son was beat up, and he was messy and dirty and smelled like pigs. I think I mentioned this last week. And you know what the father did? He ran. He ran to him and fell at his feet. That's what I'm praying for our kids today. What's the memorial that you have? When you look back, what memories do we have? What memories? Some of us, we have memories of, of condemnation. And I remember when I was in the world, and I remember when I did that. And I remembered when I was a really bad guy, and I was in prison, and I did some things. In fact, I would, probably should have went to prison for some things that I, that I never got called for. And we could say all these things. And I remember when I was on drugs. I remember when I had an abortion. I remember when I did some hideous things, and now the guilt is killing me. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're no greater than God. And if, Jesus, if God says that he puts it as far as the east is from the west, that is one memory you do not have to have. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. And as the enemy comes to us and tries to throw that in our face, say, no, no, no. My daddy said he, for, he chose to forget those things. If you could turn in your word to Joshua 4, 14 through 24, we're going to continue talking about remembrance. And I'll give you 10 seconds to do that. Moses is dead. He's not able now to take 
the people into the promised land because Moses, like we talked about last week, Moses had sinned. He disobeyed God. You see, listen, we can't be disobedient and think that God's going to bless us. It doesn't happen. You see, sin always separates. Sin always robs us from the true blessings of God. So now God raised, you know, Joshua had been raised up. And now Joshua is leading the people into the promised land. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. They respected him. They honored him. They saw the awesomeness of God in Joshua's life because Joshua was a man of God. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come out up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up into the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as they did before. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal and the east border, border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. You see, he had the priests as they're coming out of the water to take stones and carry it on their shoulders and carry it up out of the water. And he spoke unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What means these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. That all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that he might fear the Lord your God forever. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is powerful. We don't have to ask the blessing of your word. It is blessed already. Help us to be hearers of the word and not just hearers, but doers of the word as well. Help this word to penetrate our hearts. Lord, change us today, Father God. Help us to draw near you and draw closer to you like never before, God. Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. Let your word fill us, Father God. Let your word guide us. Let your word be the light to us, Lord. And Lord, as we're tempted to look to the left and to the right, and to listen to this and to listen to that, let your word and your Holy Spirit be the driving force in everything that we do. Let your word, Lord, you said your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish everything that you have sent it to do. We receive your word now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to find out in a few minutes how that worked out. We're going to find out when, when, when Joshua had the priests carry the stones up and they made a heap and they made an altar and then they made a memorial so that years later that the kids will look at it and say, what is this? And the parents could tell them, hey, this is when God did the impossible. This is when there was an obstacle up ahead to where the Jordan River was literally overflowing its banks and there's no way that we could cross. But God made a way when there was no way. You see, do we have memorials and our families like that to where our children can say, my mom and dad trust God and I remember when we were going through it. And I remember when there was an impossible situation and my mom and dad, they got on their knees and they prayed. And God moved on their behalf. And now I know their Lord and Savior. That's what it's all about, isn't it? What are we remembering? Do you remember what it was like before you were saved? Brother Lee, do you remember what it was like? I know we're not dwelling on that. It's, it's like driving a car. You, you glance in the rearview mirror. 
every once in a while. You don't stare at it or you'll crash. But we need to look back every once in a while. And, and I think back, and even though I was a really, really good young man, the Word says there's none good. And I remember being in torment, and I remember the fear. I remember staying up at night and, not, and, I'm, and I'm afraid to turn out the lights sometimes. I remember the pain. I remember the anguish. I remember carrying the entire load my own self. Do you remember that? Maybe your story is different than mine, but I believe it's basically all the same. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a BC story. <laughs> and, and if we are honest with ourselves, it wasn't very good, was it? And it was painful. And Israelites, they had a bad memory. And, and, and the Lord would do miraculous things to them. And he, you know, he made it to their clothes didn't wear out 40 years. And they didn't have to go through another pair of shoes. And, and you know, and he would take care of them with food and, you know, quail and, and you know, and manna and, and, and water and all these things. And they did nothing but complain. And they had a terrible memory. And we would have been better off if we would have been back in Egypt in captivity. Oh, what a memory. Listen. We were in captivity before Jesus. We were in captivity, and we thought we were free. Remember those days when you thought, oh, those Christians are so bound up. They wouldn't know a good time if it hit them over the head. And all along, you're dancing like a puppet. And the puppet master, oh, he's a terrible master, is uh, the devil. And then one day, you knelt at an altar, and guess what? Jesus cut the strings. And we were no more, no longer Subject to him, to that enemy. But we, sons and daughters, to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, praise God. See, when we look back, sometimes we have a tendency, sometimes, some of us to say, I wasn't so bad. And that one, yeah, it was. It was terrible. And guess what? And on top of it, after everything else, you were on your way to hell. You had no hope. And Jesus came into our life. Praise God. So do you remember what it was like before you received Jesus as your Savior? The pain and the heartache. Do you remember kneeling? At, do you remember what it was like kneeling an altar of repentance? And when you kneel, knelt down, and it could have been at an altar like this. It could have been, I don't know, at your bathtub. It doesn't matter where it happened. <laughs> do you remember? And when you knelt down, the load of this world was just so heavy on you. And then after you received the Lord as your Lord and Savior, and I'm not talking about a religious thing. I'm talking about you received the gift that Jesus paid for. 100%. Remember how light you were? <laughs> you remember how, you know, it was like, wow, I think I'm going to float. Do you remember that? Let's not forget that. Do you remember how heavy you felt kneeling down and how light you felt getting up? Do you remember telling God, my life is yours. Do with it whatever you will, Lord. Do you remember that? I said it. Do you remember saying that? What happened? Do you remember praying, God, give me everything you have for me. Give me your Holy Ghost. If that's what I need to live a, a, a strong life, if that's what I need to fulfill the life that you have given me, Lord, whatever you have for me, I want. Do you remember praying that? What happened? Do you remember telling God, my life is yours. Do everything you want through me. Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Tell me what you want to do. Do you remember those days? I love having new Christians in because they're so zealous and they wanted, you know, what can I do? What can I do? And we need to, and sometimes we say, well, when you get strong enough, you can know, you know what? They're zealous. We need to use them and they need to be an example to us. And when new Christians come in, it breeds new life and it wakes us up out of our sleep and reminds us of how it used to be and how God wants it to be now. Listen, he doesn't want us to be just a full of bunch of just what used to be's. You know, it's like the, 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 when the 4th of July parades, whenever they do it, and you see the old guys, and I'm so proud of these guys, I really, really am, and they put their uniforms on, and they wear their ribbons, and they wear their badges, and they're walking, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and they're, they're proud of what they did. But we can't just stop at our laurels and what we did and, and, you know, and all that. There's work to be done. Our children need to see us living for God and forsaking everything else. Lord, do you remember saying, 
Use me, Lord. Use me no matter what. Whatever you want me to do. You want me to clean the toilets? You want me to do the nursery? Do you want me to preach? Do you want me to go to sidewalk, Sunday school? Whatever it is, Lord, use me. And see, and that's what we prayed for, for the Holy Spirit anyway. Because the Holy Spirit, He gives us to do what? To equip us to do things that we could never do before. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no way in the world that this shy guy could get up in front of you and cry before you. And, and proclaim that God is God and awesome. And he wants to be awesome in your life. You see, the Holy Spirit equips us to do that. That dutimous power to where we get past our own selves. Because it is not about us. It's about the kingdom and about God. And increasing the kingdom of God. And decreasing the kingdom of the enemy. Do you remember the joy? Do you remember the peace? you remember... Not being able to wait to get with, with fellow believers and maybe just hooking up at McDonald's and having a, a, a impromptu Bible study. Do you remember how you couldn't wait to come to church? That's, that's where we all are now, isn't it? But, you know, we would, you know, we'd come to church and we couldn't wait to get to the altars. And we couldn't wait. Um, well, we could wait. You know, and we, couldn't, we, just, we just wanted to stay there. We wanted to tarry at the altars and just stay there and hang at the altars and pray. And tarry. We used to call it tarry at the altars. And, and God would do things. And Do you remember that? What happened? You think maybe it's because we have just enough God and we, we don't need any more than that? Well, I'm here to tell you. The world needs us to have more than that. And I believe, I believe that God is using this thing for his glory and for the Christians to wake up and to be who he wants us to be. I'm not talking about being religious. No, no. -uh. I'm talking about knowing him more and being so full of Jesus, so full of the Holy Ghost, and so full of love and grace, not condemning people. But loving on them. And when you see another Christian or somebody sinning, it breaks our heart because it breaks his heart. And having grace. I believe we're getting back to that, folks. I want to. How about you? In Joshua and Judge and Judges 2, 16 through 24. It's 6 through 24, I'm sorry. Joshua, they're in the promised land now. And God had already, he fought before them. He helped them at Jericho. They walked around. They shouted. The walls came tumbling down. They went across the Jordan on dry land. They, God gave them everything they needed to go before their enemies and to totally annihilate them. And they didn't do it. And some of the people, some of, some of the tribes said, well, you know what, that's too hard up there. We're going to move down here. And you know, what, you know what, we could use them instead of totally wiping them out. You know what, we'll make them pay tribute to us and they'll be our servants. And guess what, one thing led to another. And before you know it, these people who had trusted God, who had led them through the wilderness and led them to the promised land, now they're, they're running off with other gods. Small g, because they're not really gods. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man into his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Great. I wish we could stop right there at verse 7. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the, bar, the border of the inheritance in Timnath. Harry's and the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill Gaiash. And also all the generation that were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them. This is one of the saddest scriptures in the word of God. Let me read it again. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. You see, Joshua and Caleb, their contemporaries, the ones who were their age who went through. They died. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the God of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and 
and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. I hate to end on that note. And I'm not going to. You see, this generation, Joshua had the priests carry the stones up so that this, this generation we're talking about would look and say, what is this? And they'd say, oh, I'm glad you asked me. I'm glad you asked me that because I want to tell you something about our God. He did the impossible on our behalf. He went before us and he conquered enemies. He conquered foes. But see, this generation, they heard about the goodness of God, but they didn't see the goodness of God. What are we giving our kids to remember? What are we giving them to remember? Are they able to look at us and say, my parents trust God with everything in them? They're not relying on their bank accounts. They're not relying on their home or all these other things. They're not relying on the doctors. Yeah, those things are cool and they're nice and that's good. But I've seen the impossible in my parents' life because God moved mightily. Listen, I believe that the time is coming, and I believe this is what God wants now, for a mighty, mighty revival to break out. There were signs and wonders take place. And our children, this generation, will see, not just hear about the good old days when God would move. Not just hear about when the Holy Spirit would, would move on somebody's life and they could do things that they, know they couldn't do before. You see, let's stop being so la lackadaisical. And so just happy with the past. Let's go back. I remember one time I was with Pastor Skip. We were, we were at a revival. And there was a big banner. And it says, God, do it again. And Pastor Skip looked at me. And he said, you know, Alan, when we start doing what we did before, God will do what he did then. You see, we just want it so easy. We want it so easy. Like those ones who, the soldiers and the, and the sailors who gave it all. We don't want to give anything. We want the freedom. We want the blessings. We want all this. But remember, freedom is never free. Anything worth having is never, ever free. I'm not talking about this, this Christian walk being a chore. Because it is not. It's full of blessing and life abundantly. But our children need to see a move of God. And I'm not just talking about a Pentecostal experience inside the four walls. I'm talking about a life-changing experience outside the four walls. Where miracles take place. Healings take place. Lives are delivered. You know what I'm talking about. Heavenly Father, we need you today. Heavenly Father, wake us up. Help us to trust your word and nothing else. Help us to seek your face and nothing else. Help us to realize your Holy Spirit, your Holy Ghost is the power that we need. And all those things that we have been relying on before and all those things that were aids that we thought that, that would help us, Lord, and they're not really aids at all. And all the programs and all these things that inherently are not wrong, but Lord, we can't depend on them. We depend on you. So we humbly bow now, Lord. Forgive us. We repent. Come into our lives afresh and anew. Give us a fresh touch. Give us a desire for your word that we haven't seen in a long, long time. And Lord, during this time to where we have no time to do anything but think, help us to guard our thoughts. And not be the thoughts of defeat, not be the thoughts of negativism, but be the thoughts of who you are and who we are in you. If there's anyone who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, let today be the day. Lord, what we talked about earlier, there's so many people who are carrying the weight of the sin. They don't have the hope of Jesus. They know about you. They know of you. 
They've heard people talk about you. They've heard their family talk about you. And they've heard about great exploits. And they've heard about great revivals. And they heard, maybe even heard about miracles. Help them to experience you in a real way, Lord. Help us to show them you. Lord, we're a needy people. All these needs that we've been praying for, Lord, for physical needs, Lord. Mental needs, emotional needs. We come against depression today, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we come against this thing as the enemy, as the spirit of depression will come upon people, even Christians. We bind in the name of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we declare your blessing in every area. Lord, you are our sustenance, Lord. And you are going to bless your faithful people, Lord. You're going to make a way where there seems like there is no way. And God, we just thank you and we praise you. We magnify your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for souls coming to you. And Lord, and as they come, we're going to disciple them. And we're going to show them you, who you are, Lord. Because that is what we need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In your mighty name, we declare it and we praise you for it. Amen.
Make an altar. Make an altar right where you are now. Wherever you are. He's waiting for you. He's calling to you. As the father on the porch was caught waiting for the son. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise you. Kid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. <laughs> 